welcome to Waco, Texas. Site of the Southwest Regional, we're down to three teams. And tonight, Midland, Texas faces River Ridge, Louisiana, with a trip to the regional championship on the line. And the winner of the region advances to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Earlier today, Tulsa, Oklahoma advances to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Earlier today, Tulsa, Oklahoma eliminating New Mexico. Tulsa will get the loser of tonight's game. And good evening from Waco and East Shroff alongside former big leaguer Keith Moreland. In this region, the dominant team has been Louisiana. They've clicked on all four cylinders. They've pitched, they've played defense, they've hit, and their culinary skills have been as good as anybody. Right, it's been good food, hasn't it? There's no doubt about it, but they've been even better on the field. When you just look what they've brought to the table from top to bottom, they have been the most dominant club so far. They've hit the ball out of the ballpark. They've shown that they can catch it with anybody. They have not committed an error. And then last but not least, they lead in ERA in this Southwest Regional. They have been dominant in all three areas. And, you know, they're looking to be the team to beat right now. They've only given up one run in the region. The defense has been perfect. They turned to triple play. They're leading in pretty much every offensive category. And you mentioned the food spreads. The parents rented out an Airbnb. They spent the day basically cooking, and they've been kind enough to bring us food over the course of our time here in Waco. For Texas West, the boys from Midland, Friday Night Lights Country, it starts at the top. Well, they've been really good. You look at the very top of this lineup, and they've been the most productive. The number 200, Adrian Serrano, is as good a player as you've seen. Really athletic. And they have scored 11 runs. They have driven in eight runs. So they have been the part of the lineup that has done all the damage. The other part is they have at times struggled to catch it a little bit. They've got to put it all together tonight. They've got to pitch, catch, and keep swinging the bat. And they've put up some big innings. They've only scored in four of the 12 possible innings, but at least three runs in each of those innings in which they've scored. What's at stake tonight? Well, a trip to the regional final. Whoever wins tonight will be one win away from Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Midland, Texas in the center of the Permian Basin from the plains of West Texas, originally founded as a railroad town between Fort Worth and El Paso. My name's Eric Midland. I'm the manager of the Northern Little League All-Stars from Midland, Texas. Here's my team. Hi, my name is Jason Stockstill, and I'm one of the assistant coaches. Hi, my name is Ray Pearson, and I'm one of the assistant coaches. My name's Crew Colley. I pitch and play right field in my favorite movie's Anchorman. My name is Grayson Register. I pitch, and my favorite movie is The Benchwarmers. Hi, my name is Jarrett Stockstill. I play second base, and my favorite all-around player is Patrick Mahomes. My name is Aiden Serrano. I play center field, and my favorite movie is Suicide Squad. My name is Kip Cormia. I play left field, and my favorite MLB player is Joey Gallo. My name is Levi Bailey. I play right field, and my favorite food is crab. My name is Yomar Prado. I play left field. My favorite baseball player is Javier Baez. My name is Cole Netherland. I play shortstop, and my favorite thing to do is hunt. My name is Jake Nava. I play center field, and I like fishing. My name is Ian Shedden. I play first base, and my favorite MLB player is Christian Yelich. My name is Jaden Rogers. I play third base, and I like hitting diggers. Hi, my name is Carlos La Madrid. I play catcher, and my favorite MLB player is Cody Bellinger. I'm Gavin Schubert. I play catcher, and my favorite college is the Texas Longhorns. And they'll be facing Connor Perrott. He comes out making his second appearance on the mound. He has one innings pitch. It, you know, he's, he's got really good stuff. He's got a command. That's the most important thing for him. He's going to probably push 65, 66 miles an hour with his fastball. He's got a good three-quarter breaking ball that he will use, especially to the right-handed hitters. But he's got to keep the ball down and pitch ahead. And he'll face Crew Collie, who leads it off for Texas West. Collie first pitch swinging and serves it foul. He spells his first name C R U E, and that is for Motley Crew. His parents named him after the band. And he likes the music. Uh, he's got to, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he would have to. Got the long 
Wavy blonde surfer hair, and he will not cut his hair during the baseball season. Parat steps off the mound. It'll be an 0-1. Outside. This River Ridge club from just outside of New Orleans is very sound. There's the breaking ball upstairs. It, it, they shift really well as a group in the outfield. They shift in the infield. They, they pitch and they scout. And they know where guys are going to hit the ball. They the, seem to be in the right spot all the time. They gave up a run the other night, and that was a big deal because it was the first run they had allowed in this entire tournament, not just in Waco. That includes states and districts. They've outscored their opponents since the start of districts 94 to 1. Wow. Lined right to Marshall Luke at first, one away. East Bank Little League out of River Ridge, Louisiana. Third Ridge Southwest Ridge Regional Ridge appearance Ridge in the last five years. Won by Run Rule on the opening night against Ridge Arkansas. Ridge and then in one of the best played Ridge Little League games we've Ridge seen, Ridge they beat Texas East 4-1. And the kid who made the catch at first, Luke, was sublime on the mound. Breaking ball strike to Aiden Serrano, he can who's hit. not only Midland's best hitter, he's one of the best hitters in this region. Yeah, very mechanically sound. Lifts his hands, very compact swing. Back-to-back -back breaking balls, 0-2. Came back with a fastball, good idea, just missed. He tried to dot the eye on the outside corner, didn't get the call. Another breaking ball, grounded to the right side. Derek Dillat over to first, and two down. The top of this order, as you mentioned, has been so good for Texas. I mean, they've just, well, They've driven in eight runs, they've scored 11. And this would be a heck of a statement to come right out and get a one, two, three inning here in the top of the first. Ball one, it's a Cole Netherland. Three for six, three runs batted in in this region. Line drive, base hit right center. You mentioned at the top three, Keith. Nine for 19. Here in Waco, coming into tonight. Well, they're, they're 10 for 22 now. This is a really nice job of going with the ball away from him. Up over the top. Hands come back. Very quiet hands. Good load. The ball's up and away. What do you do? Go with it. Carlos La Madrid, the cleanup hitter. Nickname Carlitos. Pacino movie, Carlito's way. Yes. Boy, really good command so far with that breaking ball. That's a good backdoor one. Started out away, brought it back to the outside corner. Hit hard to second. Nice play to lap. Goes to second for the force. And that does it. Parat able to navigate to the top of this Texas West order. River Ridge, Louisiana sits right on the Mississippi River, just 10 miles outside of New Orleans, located in Jefferson Parish. Hi, my name is Scott Frazier. I'm the head coach of East Bank Little League, representing the state of Louisiana, and here's my team. Don Abney, assistant coach. I'm Kevin Johnson, assistant coach. Hi, my name is Peyton Spinoni. I play center field, and my favorite baseball player is Aaron Judge. Hi, my name is Alvin Schwartz. I play left field. At home, they call me Lil Al, and I hit singles. I'm Maurice Roussel. I play right field, and I like to chase redfish. I'm Derek Dillat. I play second base and pitcher, and my favorite MLB baseball player is Alex Bregman. I'm Marshall Luke. 
I play third base and pitcher, and I like to fish. I'm Ryan Dara. I play center field and second base, and I like to run touchdowns. Hi, my name is Egan Prather. I play pitcher and catcher, and my favorite baseball player is Gary Sanchez. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Curtis. I play catcher and outfield, and my favorite athlete is Ray Lewis. Hi, my name is Ryder Planchard. I play third base and catcher, and my favorite athlete is Zared Jeter. Hi, my name is William Andrade, and I play left field at third base, and I like to climb trees. Hi, my name is Stan Wiltz. I play shortstop, and my favorite athlete is Jose Altuve. I'm Gavin Berry. I play left field, and my favorite food is hamburgers. Hi, my name is Connor Perrot. I play first base, and at home they call me Lil Nugget. And he'll be facing the left hander, Crew Collie. It's not going to overpower you. He's a guy that mixes speeds. He's got a really good little breaking ball. He's got a fastball that he will use outer half, and then he's got a changeup. Left handed, he gets the right handed hitters out on their front foot. He's got the breaking ball for the left handed hitters that he uses. He's got to keep the ball down. He's not going to overpower you with velocity. Ryan Darrow, the leadoff man for Louisiana. Swings at the first pitch, owned one. Dara, the youngest of four siblings. He's a big Colorado Rockies fan and wears his lucky rubber band. Let's head back to a breaking ball. I was talking about the, in his first outing, he really didn't have great command of that breaking ball. He got away with it. But for him to have success tonight, he's got to be able to command it. 0 2 popped up. Foul territory. And the catch is made by Ian Shadden, one away. Midland, Texas, first Southwest regional appearance since 2011. In Thursday's opener, they knocked off Oklahoma 11-3, then beat New Mexico 6-3. In that 6-3 win, all six runs came in one inning. Yeah, they've been able to put their runs together in, in, in big innings, no question about it. Some pop coming to the plate here. Reese Roussel, one for seven in the regional, the one, a home run. Looks at a first pitch strike. Colley the first time out, three innings, four hits, two runs, and a little wild. He hit a couple of batters and he walked one. One and one. The team gets a drop down just a little bit, get a little more sweet to that breaking ball at times against left-handers. 1-1 one, one to Roussel, big fan of the LSU Tigers and Former Tiger, great now with the Astros, Alex Bregman. One and two. Now you want to make this breaking ball look like a strike and break it off of the plate. See if he comes back to it here. Skips rope, two and two. Yeah, came back inside with it. Full count. Base hit right field. A one out single for Marshall Luke. He's been the best pitcher we've seen in this regional, and you can argue the best all-around player we've seen in this regional. Uh, he's just a really good player. He's got good power, the off-fields, outstanding arm. Swing and a miss. He pitched five-plus innings the other day, so not eligible to pitch until Wednesday, and that would be a potential championship. There's where he's got to stay. Collie's got to stay down. Have that breaking ball to move down, get the guys to swing the, over the top of it. Ball. 
Outside. But I like the location. Second time around down the mound, much more comfortable. Yeah, you're used to the lights, uh, the, the TV cameras, the, the stadium. Inside, it gets away from La Madrid. And on to second, Roussel. That's a big play. It's just game in and game out. Do you allow that, that 60 feet into scoring position? This changes the inning. Now a base hit, you can come up with a one nothing lead. Time is called. Looks like there's a ball on the field down the left field line. And that'd be a tennis ball. And Johnny Chavez taking care of it. Chavez at third, Aaron Cruz, the umpire at second, Sam Lopez at first, and Mark Bunch behind the plate. Three and two. Roussel advances to third. Just heads up base running there. Catcher did a nice job keeping it in front. Anticipation. You come off the bag each time. Watch him come off on the pitch, and then when he sees it in the dirt, never, no hesitation. He takes off for third. In the air to center field and deep. Serrano turns around and watches it go into the trees. Marshall Luke. You miss, you get ahead, one and two. Fight off a pitch, miss with the pitch, and then three, two, come back to a fastball. And this just rocketed out of here, no doubter. When it leaves the bat, it was a matter of just how far. And it's two nothing, Louisiana. Fouled off by Connor Parrott. You know, before he hit that, I was about to say, well, now with a man on third and one out, you could trade an out for a run. Silly me. It's only been four in this Southwest Regional, all four hit by Louisiana. He didn't get cheated on that one either. This one, deep to left field. That'll go to the wall. Parat to second. We told you these guys could slug. They came into this game with a team 733 slugging percentage. Yeah, breaking ball right here. Just a little bit on the end. Had good angle coming off the bat. But just caught it a little bit on the end of the bat, but strong enough to get it back to the warning track. Well, I tell you what, three consecutive hits, and just like that, uh, runner, number one, Peyton Spadoni. We'll get a special pinch runner for Parat, Peyton Spadoni. You can use a special pinch runner twice in a game, no more than once per inning, and you can't use him for the same player twice. Also, a special pinch runner does not count to a mandatory play. Every team has mandatory play requirements for its roster, depending on roster size. Strike one to Gavin Berry, who has homered in this regional. 0-2. Oh, I thought that was a foul ball. That I think hit. that ball hit him off his leg. I think they, they would have to bring somebody together and call time and see if anybody else saw that. Yeah, that, that clearly hit him. Yeah, he, he, it hitting in the thigh. See the swing there? Yeah, right off the right thigh. Yeah, that's definitely. I'm look at. Umpires get it right, and 
they're going to take a view of this and make sure they go back and get a view of it. Now, this is not a challenge. This is a umpire review. Mark Bunch is the home plate umpire, and uh, I don't want to be the 900th person in his life to make a Marky Mark Funky Bunch joke, so I'll just leave it at that and walk away. Chance to see it again right here. Slow, slowed down, definitely. Contact with the bat and then contact with his right thigh. So Spadoni returns to second. It'll be an 0-2 count to Gavin Berry. Berry says if he wins the lottery, he wants to buy a mansion. But there is a, a condition there, Keith. It's got to have a water slide. Ooh, okay. They don't have to buy a mansion to have a water slide. They can buy a big pool. Sure could. But if you won the lottery, you might want a mansion yeah. with a with a gotcha. water slide, right? This one hit well to center. Serrano going back. It's over his head and over the wall. An automatic double. A run scores. And the big hits continue. After the leadoff man popped out, single, home run, and then back-to-back -back doubles. Break a ball, stayed up, out over the plate, anticipating it. Boy, he put a charge in this. Serrano, an excellent center fielder. He was back quickly, just couldn't get back to it. Ground rule double, leads to a run. Ali will get a mound visit. Let's work. Let's work. Hey, you're living a little high. Keep it down. Work it down. Hey. You're good. You're good, baby. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Have fun. Go to work. You got this. Hey. Wink at him and go to work. Hey. Let's do it. You got me? All right, buddy. Let's go, guys. Exactly what we were talking about. When you make mistakes, Anything elevated, it, even if it's a breaking ball, guys are going to adjust to it. When he's been down, he hasn't been hurt. All of these pitches that he's had hit hard here as of late have all been up in the zone. Egan Prather pops it foul. He'll begin the game behind the plate as a catcher, and he's also the team's number two pitcher, so you could see him in the later innings and perhaps beyond in this tournament. A ball and a strike. And you can't catch more than three and pitch in the same ball game, so it's something we will watch. Louisiana's manager Scott Frazier told me the plan was for Prather to catch a couple of innings and if needed be available to close the game out if Louisiana was in position and they put themselves in a great starting position up three nothing in the bottom of the first still batting a man at second and only one out. Swing and a miss, two away. There is a difference between missing high and throwing a pitch up high. Now that was out of the zone above the, the hitting area and you got a hitter to chase. That's much different, but if you hit, hit the top of the strike zone with that pitch, you got a chance to, for it to be hit hard. Derek Delat, a perfect four for four in this regional. 
This one gets away from La Madrid and advancing to third is Barry. And the hitter at the plate, Delat, he has become a bit of a sensation here in Waco because of the shoe game. One of the parents, it's Connor Parat's dad, Floyd, will design these cleats. Leather paint and Delat has an SVP logo and an ESPN logo on his cleats. And in fact, the young man got a Twitter response from our very own Scott Van Pelt who said, hey, my objectivity has been compromised. <laughs> Go East Bank, swing for the fences. This was before Louisiana's first game and Delat, who's not normally a power hitter, first at bat of this regional, two run triple. Up the middle, and through, a base hit and an RBI for Derek Delat. The shoe game is strong, his mom Jennifer likes it, and he's now a perfect five for five in this region. Yeah, he's just been outstanding. And Stay in there left-hander, where was this? Up again, breaking ball, going across the zone, but elevated. And he stayed in there long enough just to get it on the barrel of the bat and get it back through the center of the diamond. I know the shoes are working. Baseball is a game of superstitions and certainly many superstitious types cling to their traditions in this game. N never take those shoes off. Sleep with them. Alton Shorts will bat in the eighth spot here for Ryder Planchard. Shorts, base hit. First and second to two outs. These balls have been hit right on the button. Barreled up, pinch hitting roll, walk up there, go to swing it. He did hit that ball right on the button. The game, Louisiana has batted around and now Stan Wiltz, the number nine hitter in the lineup. Ryder Blanchard will Wiltz. come in for Alton Shorts. That is not a special pinch runner, it's a re-entry. That was Planchard's spot in the lineup. This one on one hop to second. Stock still over to first and that does it. Louisiana bats around. They put up a four spot in the bottom of the first and Marshall Luke providing the thunder. That's gone! That's way gone! Oh, yeah! Yes, sir! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! From Midland. Now, they've got to come back down 4 nothing against a Louisiana team that's given up just one run since the start of districts. So, district tournament, state tournament, now the regional. Louisiana's given up one run. Jared Stockstill with a good start here in the second. A single through the left side. His first hit of the regional. Now here's the journey to Williamsport. It starts in the districts, then You've got your sectional, then you've got the state, province, or country tournament. Now we're in the regional. Now we're in the great game. And if you win the regional, on to Williamsport and to the Little League World Series. This one into left center field. The Texas West Bats coming alive here in the second. Stock still around third. He's coming home. He'll Dang. score the throw Dang. to third is in time, and Jaden Rogers is cut down. A run does score. Yeah. 
comes back, tries to start him off with a breaking ball. What happens? He left it up. And he puts a charge into it in the gap. Really nice job of getting this back in and knowing where you're going to go. Relay coming to the plate. Catcher smart enough to go get it, come up with it, and get the out. Wasn't going to get the out at the plate, but he went and cut it off for it before it bounced. He cuts the runner down, going trying to go to third. Ian Shadden, the batter, the first baseman. All right, Keith, let's teach a little bit, right? You're down four runs. They always say it's okay to make the first or third out of an inning at first base. Oh, I'm sorry. You never want to make the first or third out of an inning at first base. It's okay to make the second out. There he made the first out of the inning at first uh, third base. Well, he was hustling. He rounded second. It, it, it was a good defensive play. Most of the time when you see the throw coming in over and not coming off, going all the way to the plate, you think you can advance. It was a really intelligent play. I put to come cut this ball off and then make the throw back to third. Shadden is down on strikes. First strikeout for Parat. Yomar Prado now. They call him Gumby. He can bend in any direction to make a play. And he's played a fine yes, shortstop. He he's made one of the best plays we've seen going in the hole to get an out. Oh, and two. just stays alive. Watt is one of those guys, Connor, you can see his, his dad does the paint jobs and he, he's got, he's got the golden spikes on and he likes to work quickly. He has thrown 14 consecutive strikes. Uh, it, that's, he's just filling it up right now. That's how you pitch when you have the lead. Yep. 15 straight strikes. Now pitch counts being so important in Little League and determining when a pitcher can come back. It's important not to waste pitches, and even when he's missed, it's been close. One, two, lined right to third, and that'll do it. Whether it's LSU or East Bank Little League, the tailgate travels when there's a team from Louisiana. We'll tell you what we mean after this. River Ridge, and this is how Louisiana cooking is done. So we're cooking pastalaya, very similar to jambalaya, but instead of using rice, we're using pasta noodles. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. That's outstanding. Absolutely. Anytime, buddy. Anytime. Appreciate it. I got to tell you, it was delicious, too. Those guys that put on a show learned how, I mean, know how to make jambalaya, but it's the first time I'd seen pasta lie, and it was awesome. A lot of the parents rented a big Airbnb here in Waco, and yeah, they'd come by our truck before the game, drop off food, and they tell us, what do we do all day where the kids are over at the hotel? We cook, and we cook, and we cook some more. The tailgate travels with this team, and food is a big part of the experience. It is. There's no question about it. Uh, 
I mean, we've we've had a little bit of everything, seen a lot of different things. It, it, the food is just magnificent. Ryan Dara pops it up. Prado makes the call and the catch on the outfield branch. Catch all of the excitement from all of the seven Little League World Series tournaments, including visitor information, score stats, video highlights, and more. Visit Little League. Dot org. So where we saw you eating the uh, pasta yeah, laya there, Reese. was that first helping, yeah. second helping? Uh, second time. <laughs> second time through, maybe. Roussel pops it foul. Red beans and rice have been good. Pitcher, pitcher, pitcher. Oh, pitcher, pitcher, pitcher. Here, here, here. Yeah, pasta tonight. Bring it Ed Tufay, a lot of times of the year, crawfish Ed Tufay is too late in the year. Crawfish season's already over. But I'm sure there's some boudin balls around somewhere, things like that. Was he getting some beignets for dessert? Yes, well, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, I, I, I tell you, hey, Louisiana's coming to the plate hacking. I mean, they, eight out of 11 have come to the plate and they're swinging early in counts. It, they understand it. They've got a great idea. They've got a great game plan. And they've come to execute it. Reese Roussel, the hitter, singled and scored in that four run first. Two for eight in the regional with a home run. Swing and a miss. Difference is the location of the pitch. That pitch down, you get it out. You made a, made a mistake up to this young man, and he made you pay. Marshall Luke is the hitter. He put one in the trees in center field his first time up. The longest home run we've seen hit here in Waco. Rope foul down the left field line. Upstairs gets great extension, and right there, it, it, it was a no doubt. I mean, it, it left the bat. He knew it. It wasn't a person in the ballpark. Didn't it? it went over the flagpole into the trees. Farthest ball by far we've seen hit in the Southwest region. This one. Luke's second of the game. Just left of center field, and it's 5-1. Folks, this is a liner. Gets the front side down and brings his hands in. Barrels it up. This doesn't get very high. There's two ways to hit a home run, low and hard or high and far, and he's done both of it in this ball game. <laughs> Driven out in the left center field. That gets in the gap. Parat into second with a stand-up double. That's his second double of the game. Now, the amount of extra base hits this team has hit and the power Five home runs in this regional. All of them have been hit by Louisiana. And they've been the one team that's been able to drive the ball into the gaps. Just in this ball game alone, that is the fifth extra base hit. Heart of the order today, Keith. Five for five, three doubles and two home runs. Barry, the batter, had an RBI double his first time up. Swings at the first pitch, and that's been the approach. They've been aggressive. I mean, they've come to the plate swinging it. Barry's favorite athlete, Cody Bellinger, in the thick of the NL MVP race with Christian Yelich. Milwaukee not 
in the playoff snapshot just yet. They're certainly in the picture, but if the season ended today, they would be out. L.A., of course, has a 17-game lead in the NL West. Yelich won the award last year, and often it is the best player on one of the two or three best teams that gets the award. Down the right field line and slicing foul. Although you, as you said earlier in this regional, you were on that Cubs team. Last place, but Andre Dawson won MVP. It was just a fantastic year that Hawk had. There's no doubt. I mean, you look in the American League. I mean, look at the numbers that Mike Trout is putting up. Wow. But if they don't make the playoffs, right, do you give it to maybe a DJ LeMahieu? Well, he's having a brilliant year as well. Can't argue with the numbers Trout has put up. But the Angels, again, right now on the outside looking in. I think the perception of that has started to change a little with the advanced metrics. Two, two, strike three. Marshall Luke does it again. Second home run of the game. Parks this one just left of center. 5-1, River Ridge, Louisiana. River Ridge, Louisiana, represented by East Bank Little League, and East Bank softball was here in Waco recently. They won this regional, outscoring opponents 28-2. Kayla Giardina did not allow a run in 20 innings while striking out 24, and East Bank will head to the Little League Softball World Series, which begins Wednesday. Uh, they're dominant uh, throughout that Southwest Regional. Uh, you're into the middle part of the game right here now. If you're Texas, you've got to find a way to start gathering some base runners here. You've got 9-1-2 due right here. It's a good inning. Maybe get something going because the top of the sword has been really good. Levi Bailey bloops one into center for a leadoff single. And that turns the lineup over. Crew Kali, the leadoff man, will step in. Kali lets the hair grow in season, likes to fish and listen to Motley Crew. His namesake. Sliced foul. Texas is an aggressive team. Both these teams are aggressive offensively. They go to the plate wanting to and willing to swing the bat. Grounded a second. The throw to second gets away. Everyone's safe, no advance. And Midland, Texas set up here, first and second, nobody out. If I'm not mistaken, that is the first miscue of this Southwest Regional for Louisiana. And this, a little bit of a mental mistake. They are so good knowing where to go. He could have got the lead out there, but with a 5-1 lead, go to first base when you go to your left and get an out. Up and away to Aiden Serrano and we told you, Texas West, known for big innings in this regional. They've got their big hitter up, Serrano. Four runs batted in, a team high. Takes a fastball for a strike. Well, he is a guy that can get them right back in the game with one swing of the bat right now. A very good football player, a running back. Up the middle and through. Dara charging, throws it to the pitcher's mound, and the bases are loaded, nobody out, and Midland, Texas has the tying run at the plate. Right, left this breaking ball inside. Soriano just gets his hands in, able to get it into center. And that loads the bases. Cole Netherland is the hitter. 
Dad Eric is the team manager. Inside and high. Netherland says he's a simple man who enjoys sports, hunting, and eating. Likes a big steak. Eight. Now a mound visit. All right. I'm saying corners in. So ball hits you, go to home, and then go back to first. Okay, same with you. You can touch your bag first and throw it, then it's going to be a tag play at home, okay? Up the middle, turn two. If a ball takes you one way or the other, just get it out here, okay? Let's just make sure that anything we get it out, all right? Settle down. You got, hey, deep breath. You got to slow your, slow your heart rate. Deep breath, okay? Hey, release the ball out front, all right? Keep the ball down at the knees. Let's go. strike to Netherland, the number three hitter. He singled in the first. But the outfield very shallow. Netherland's got some pop. This outfield very shallow right now. Good pitch, two and two. Just tied him up in there and caught the inside corner as well. Count goes full, three and two. No place to put Netherland. Up the middle. DeLatte feeds second for one, throw to first, not in time, a run scores. First and third now, one out. Really nice turn right here. Netherland, who's got good speed, really had to go to get away from it. Hands, gets in on his hands a little bit. He takes off, but a really slick turn right here. Four to six, just a step late. Parat, the pitcher, almost caught that, yep. and that may have been a double play. Louisiana in this regional on the very first day finished off Arkansas on a triple play. I just had the feeling going in, I had the feeling going in this game, you were going to have to score runs to win. Carlos La Madrid. Still the tying run. Rounded to short. Nice play. Second one. On to first. 6 4 3. Louisiana, the double play to get out of the jam. And upon closer inspection, watch the replay, Carlos La Madrid did beat the relay. So it's no double play. Instead, it's an RBI. A run scores. It's 5-3 now. La Madrid at first base. And the inning continues. Jared Stockstill, the five-hole hitter. Here in Little League, you can challenge force outs, tags on base paths, missed bases, and hit batters in unlimited challenges until you get too wrong. <laughs> the ball was in his glove. I don't know if Planchard was toying with the runner or he didn't know he had it. I don't think he knew he had it in his glove. Stock still singled and scored in the second. In the air, center field. Darrell retreats and makes the catch. 
Texas West right back in this game. A run in the second, two more in the third, and Louisiana had only given up one run entering today in their run from districts, state, all the way to the regional. Texas West has three tonight, got a 5-3 game. It's the first time we've really seen Louisiana challenged by another team that can put up some runs. Well, we, we thought going into this game, folks, that you were going to see some offense, and, and, and we've seen that. I mean, just already 13 hits in the game. You know, you get to this point, you know that you, ha you don't have a loss yet. So you may not see guys, and you've used your other guys an awful lot to, to this point. So you're going to see some guys get some length on the mound, try to see if who can come out on top and score as many runs. And both these teams have answered each other both times. Both of these teams are 2-0 and yeah. in this regional, which means, yeah, there is a little bit of margin for error. And as we've said many times throughout our time here in Waco, you're managing the game. You're also managing the tournament. And you know what's at stake. You win today, you get tomorrow off, and you play Wednesday for a spot in Williamsport. Yeah, and it's a winner take all as winner well. Winner take all. If you lose today, you still have tomorrow, but then you got to play tomorrow. And then if you get to Wednesday, you're looking at playing three days in a row, and your pitching may not line up. Yeah, it, you just look at the scenario. We've seen some great individual efforts so far tonight. And the other thing for me is one little mistake. Louisiana hadn't made many mistakes. They make a mistake on a ground ball instead of getting an out. They throw it away right there and it leads to a, to a two spot. And we've seen that from Midland, Texas throughout. Teams that give them a yep. little opening make a mistake. They will make you pay. Louisiana cooking. They've been outscoring opponents 99-4 to since the start of district play. Teams from Texas have won here in Waco at the Southwest Regional the last seven times. One team from Texas has been eliminated. That was Houston. Midland obviously still here. Loser of this game plays Oklahoma tomorrow. Winner again will play in the regional final on Wednesday. First at bat for Will Andrade here in the bottom of the third. Shows bunt, misses 0 and 2. Louisiana has had an answer though offensively when they come to the plate. If you're Texas in this inning, this is when you got to put a zero up, get that momentum in your side and keep it. I mean, you've been able to come back and score some runs and gather some momentum, but they've had an answer for you. Andre loves to climb trees. Down the left field line, tailing foul. Big fan of the Red Sox and Mookie Betts, Boston in the slide. They've lost eight in a row, swept in a four-game set by the Yankees. Six and a half back in the second wild card. This coming off a season in which they won 108 games in the World Series. Yeah, it's uh, it's not over, but it's it's hard to flip a light switch and turn this thing around right now. Yeah, the starting pitching just has not been consistent all season. Ball two and two. Now Chris Sales ERA closer to five than four. He was roughed up. David Price roughed up in the Bronx last night. Porcello's been erratic. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Keith, what's surprising is the Boston offense has been arguably the best in the majors. It has. It, it, it can score some runs, no doubt. Really nice job right here. Crew colleague sort of changed his arm slot that time. Anishin got a little more on top and got some downward bite to it. Instead of sweeping across the zone, he got that one to bite down and got the strikeout. There's Derek Delat, Lil D, five for five in this regional. Likes to swim, ride bikes, play video games. Favorite movie? A one that I think everybody has seen now. Highest grossing movie of all time, Avengers Endgame. Hey. 
Did you uh, have a favorite Avenger? I, I'm an Iron Man guy, you know. Don't say any more than that, I know. No spoilers, just for, you know, the four people out there who haven't seen it. One and two. I really like the new Spider-Man, but got to go with Star-Lord. Oh, yeah. Get on top of that breaking ball again. He's made a, an adjustment and getting some downward tilt to it. See if he comes back to it. That had some English on it. Off the hand is foul. Still one and two. Kali is not overpowering, but as you said, he's got to keep the ball down. And when he's done that, he's had success tonight. Yes, when he's elevated, he's gotten in trouble. Another good solid at bat though right here. Two two. Back to the pitcher. And Delat retired for the first time in this regional. Little League would like to extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like T-Mobile who helped to maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for millions of children. And it bears repeating, this is about volunteers, volunteers that help to maintain the fields, umpires, coaches. A fantastic job. Strike one to Ryder Planchard. Texas West puts up a two spot in the top of the third and Kali and out away from a one, two, three bottom of the third. On the ground to third. High throw. And that will be the third out. So after scoring two, Midland, Texas finally keeps Louisiana off the board. We got a 5-3 game after three. I'll tell you what, this throws high. Climb the ladder. Boy, it's nice to have a tall first baseman. Game down, on the back. Halfway home, 5-3 ball game. You know, you watch it unfold and you're thinking, man, that could have been me. That could have been us. That's the coolest part, I think, as a kid, watching this event. It's your peers on that field, on the big stage, with ESPN and ABC and all the bright lights. The Southwest Regional has only produced champions from Texas or Louisiana in its 17 years. And beginning 2012, it's been only Texas teams. Louisiana, though, this year has been the team to beat. Two years ago, Lufkin, Texas, won this region and then went on to become U.S. champions and play in the Little League World Series final. And that was the head coach of Lufkin two years ago, Bud Maddox. All right, you got some momentum. You, you put a two spot up, you got a zero on the board. Now you got a chance to answer and a leadoff hitter in a three and oh count. Chance to get a base runner. See if he can't start scratching back into the lead. Swinging 3-0 is Jaden Rogers. We've seen that a couple times today. Some guys being aggressive with 3-0 counts. 3-1, 3-1. Rogers had an RBI double his first time up. Was out trying to extend a three. Extends this one deep right center and gone. Full extension, and we got a one-run game. First homer by a team other than River Ridge, Louisiana. And this ball, great extension as you talked about. 
on the barrel and out of here to dead straightaway center field. That's why you swing three and oh, because three and one, you're going to come back and hit it out of the ballpark. Number seven, Kip Colmia. We get a pinch hitter for Ian Shadden. It's Kip Colmia. Colmia into right field. That'll hang up for Roussel. One out. Wednesday night baseball, it's the Brewers and the Pirates finale of a three-game set. Milwaukee entered tonight having lost four in a row. They're four back in the central, two back in the race for the second wild card. And Christian Yelich, the reigning NL MVP, again in the mix for it this year. It's going to be him or Cody Bellinger of the Dodgers. Yelich leading the senior circuit with 37 home runs. Pinch hitter in the eighth spot now is Jake Nava. Big, tall, left-handed hitter. Favorite book, uh, Mark Twain classic, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Nubbed a foul. You know, there's a lot of guys that are playing in the big leagues also played Little League. See two of them right there. Both having great seasons. You can see both of them Wednesday night. Josh Bell, 89 runs batted in. Yelich, 37 home runs to lead the National League. Nava wants to be a vet or a wildlife biologist. Base hit left field. Tying run now at first. Ball down. Did a nice job staying in there from the left side. And just watch the barrel of the bat, folks. He will drop this barrel right down on the baseball right there. Down and through it, two, just rips Grayson, it the other way. Another pinch hitter here for Midland, Texas, Grayson Register. Both of these teams have 13 players, so mandatory play means every player has to bat once. Okay, you're gonna go in, okay? So you're gonna come on in, you're gonna go to third, all right? Hey, great job! I don't want the ball. You can give the ball to your pitcher. All right, you go in, you go to third. Go get him. Louisiana makes a pitching change with one out in the fourth, one run already in. We got a good one in Waco. Winner of this game moves on to the regional championship and would be just one win away from Williamsport. How loose is that Midland dugout? Down 4 nothing after one inning. They now have the tying run at first with one out in the fourth. The number nine hitter, Grayson Register at the plate. Egan Prather is the new pitcher. And he deals a strike on one. But good command, pitches from the first base side of the rubber. He's not going to overpower you. 65, 66, got a good changeup, and he's got a really good breaking ball. Excellent command. There's that breaking ball we talked about right there. That, that's his bread and butter when he needs it. And he is their number two pitcher behind Marshall Luke. Luke has two home runs at the plate today. Swing and a miss, strike three. We talked about him being over the top with his curveball. Good form, gets on top, bangs the hammer out in front. 12-6. Swings right over the top of it. Now batting number 85, Gavin Schubert. 
Gavin Schubert will bat here for Crew Colley in the leadoff spot. So Texas West is satisfied mandatory play. Schubert shows bump. This one gets away. And the runner down to second. Tying run now in scoring position. The wild pitch. Schubert, a very good chess player, born in Wyoming. He says the coolest place he's been to is Yellowstone. It's a great spot. Showing bunt again. Runner going to third. Throw down is not in time. We got a flag at second base, though. May have left the second base too quickly. The umpire immediately go to his back pocket to indicate that he left early. You cannot leave the base until the ball reaches the batter. He, he would definitely have left early. It's the proper call. So Nava has to return to second base. The pitch does count, and it's 3-0. Ball four, and now a chance for Midland, Texas to take the lead. Their best hitter, Aiden Serrano, is up with two on and two out. He's a guy that can leave the ballpark. He squared a lot of baseballs up this week. We could have a re-entry right here. Special talent is dancing. And Crew Colley will re enter the game and run for Schubert, who drew the walk. Low scoots away. Runners move up to second and third, and now Midland can take the lead with a base hit. See his numbers right there. He's driven in four, a couple of doubles. Two and oh. Check swing. Appeal to first. Three balls and no strikes to Serrano. The number three hitter, Cole Netherland, is on deck. Netherland one for two with an RBI. I, I, you might throw a breaking ball here. You do have an open base. See how they approach this. Went with the fastball. He didn't miss that by much. He didn't. Just had enough of it away. Got it right off the end of the bat. I'm going with a breaking ball right here. My best pitch. If I miss, I got an open base. Breaking ball low, ball four, and the bases are loaded for Cole Neverland. This is where Texas West has excelled in this regional, scoring runs with two outs, driving in runs with men in scoring position. They came into this game 11 for 21 with men in scoring position. 
And Netherlands had some big hits. One and one. Drop that breaking ball in there right there. Netherlands got some pop. He stays on the ball, drives a lot of balls to the opposite side. Two and one. These have been pretty intense 16 pitches since coming into the game. High stress. Yes, sir. Three and one. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second. And now a visit from Plancher to the catcher. Texas West trailed this game 4-0 after one inning. Chipping away, one in the second, two in the third. One more here in the fourth with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss, strike two. Just, there was nothing fancy about that. It just in a great spot, right at the knees. Payoff coming. Foul to straight back. Pretty good swing right there. Winner of this game to the regional final. Low ball four. And Midland, Texas has come all the way back from 4-0 down to tie the game. And that is three consecutive walks by Prather. Momentum in their dugouts. A chance to take the lead right here. The inning started with a home run by Jaden Rogers. After a flyout, a single, then a strikeout, and three consecutive walks. Good breaking ball to La Madrid, 0-1. Up the middle, right back to Prather. Makes the put out 1-3. But Texas West has battled back. And extra base hits. Jaden Rogers has homered and doubled. Texas, after being down 4-0 and 5-1, have tied the game. That's our Honda game summary. Midland, Texas, a run in the second, two in the third, two more in the fourth. 9-1 and 2 due up for Louisiana. Jeffrey Curtis will bat here in the 9 spot. And Collie has withstood and stayed in there. He's thrown a zero up. He gave up four in the first, came back and gave up a solo homer in the second. And since then, he's done a, a good job of allowing his team to come back. Momentum in the Texas dugout. That one hit him, so the leadoff man is aboard. I thought what Collie really did a nice job of. His team gets him two in the third to make it 5-3. Comes right back with a quick 1-2-3 inning. Now your team gets you two more. And the game is tied, but he hits the leadoff man, Curtis. Number 22, Stan Hills. It's back to the top of the order now. Four, number 14, Jeffrey Curtis. Now back, number 9, Ryan Vera. Stan Wiltz comes in to run for Curtis. Not a special pinch runner. That's a re-entry. Wiltz was originally in the 9 spot. And we go to the top of the Louisiana order. Stan Wiltz, or rather Ryan Dara. Showing bunt, pitches high, all the way to the backstop, and Wiltz to second. And now it's a much different inning now with a man at second, nobody out in the inning. Yeah. 
trying to bunt. One and one. Dara's a big Colorado Rockies fan. Charlie Blackman, his favorite player. Pretty good drag bunter, too, so that could still be on the table. Tries to bunt again. It's foul. It's going to have to start swinging now. Three, four, and five have been dynamite, and they're coming. Strike three. Five strikeouts now for Kali. With one out, brings to the plate number four, Lisa Paul. Lisa. Lefty-lefty matchup, see if he can take advantage of it. Reese Roussel singled and scored in the first, struck out in the second. Interesting that Kali struggled first time through the order. He's been much better since. Yeah, he's made the, the adjustments. Gotten the ball down, Anish. This one yanked. Right center field. Serrano is back and he makes the catch. Tagging his wilts. He'll go to third. The throw gets away. But Midland, Texas did back up the play. A terrific catch by Serrano in center. Serrano goes back. Got to find the wall. Back as deep as he can. He gets Great back to it right here. And then how about being in the right spot? Number Guess who's eight. backing this up? Marshall. Not the pitcher. The left fielder's in the right spot to back it up. Keeps that run from scoring. You got first base open. Luke at the plate, who's hit two home runs today. Do you just put him on? I do. I, I'm just giving four pitches to say that you can go to first. Now, they can appeal to second that he lose too soon. On the catch. He left after the ball was caught. being in the right spots little bitty things and they are just going to put him on uh, that's the right call you got a base open and he's put two over the fence and center now it, it adds four pitches it, you don't have to go to the outside now it adds four pitches to the pitch count and Collie will be at 73 not out of the woods yet no, Connor Parrott who's up has two booming doubles tonight in Louisiana, we've seen in this spot, first and third. Uh, they'll put something on, too, where Luke might try to take second base, and they want to dare you to throw down, and they'll send the runner from third home. Absolutely good speed on the base pass. He's going on first pitch. Parat in this tournament, five for seven. Two doubles and a home run. <laughs> Pick your poison. Right. Runner goes. Luke hung up. Going back to first. The throw gets away. A run scores. And now Luke goes to second. That's what they like to do. Put pressure on the defense. And find, found a way to score. There are times, Kali right here, you're, 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 you're better off just allowing the runner to go to a base and go back to the mound. That the throw. They drew the throw, gets away. Go ahead, run comes to the plate. Louisiana retakes the lead at 6 5. Breaking ball outside. Two zero to Parat, whose favorite athlete is California Penal League star Ricky Vaughn. Up the middle, and through. 
Luke around third. He's coming home. Serrano's got a cannon. Did he get him? Luke sliding safely in there. They may challenge this. What a throw by Serrano from center. Well, he's got a tremendous arm, and he comes up with a great throw. He does a great job as an outfielder. Spock comes through. He's coming after it hard. Comes up with it. Throw to the plate. Reaches out. Says he didn't tag him, and he got around it. Chance to see it again right here up close. Is there a tag that gets him on his body? Maybe see from this angle, does he touch him in any, any location? Yes, he does. You can see the glove move back. I think there's enough evidence to overturn this. As soon as the play was over, the catcher, La Madrid, sprang up and pointed to the dugout to challenge the play. What a this is a reviewable throw. play. Right there, you can see the tag. Now watch the mitt move. There's no question it's against his body. That's, that's the best throw we've seen. Serrano throw. has been just a tremendous athlete. We saw him make a great play out there in center, a great catch, now a great throw. He's run the base as well. He's hit with power, a couple of doubles. He's driven in runs. He's played multiple positions. Yeah, can do a lot of different things. Got to give Louisiana a lot of credit. Here comes the call. Runner is out. That's the right call. Aiden Serrano showing off the arm in center field. He, he, to throw a guy out at the plate at this level, you got to charge it. Then he gets it in his hands. Perfect strike to the plate for the out. Yeah, I mean, from my vantage point, he said. Yeah, I'm gonna trust my catcher. Oh, well, he said no, well, You know what? You got two of them. You use them. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely a situation where you use it oh, no yeah. matter what. Oh yeah. It's out. Yeah! Come on! Come on! Come on! One happy and one in disbelief. The agony and the ecstasy. The play in question was the play that ended the bottom of the fourth inning. A base into center field. Marshall Luke trying to score from second. Originally ruled safe at the plate. Upon further review and video review, he was ruled out. And again, look at this throw. Right Perfect strike. On the money. And Carlos La Madrid, as you saw, tagged Luke on the backside before he touched home. Still, Louisiana did get a run in that inning to take the lead. 6-5. And if you're Texas West, you navigated through the top of the order, the top four hitters there, and you only gave up a run. That's a minor victory in this game. One and two, the count to the number five hitter for Texas West, Jared Stockstill. We got a little backswing contact right here. It was not in the forward swing, so there's no interference, but that's why these young men wear the scully, the catchers, because that backswing of that bat coming back around is dangerous. Strike three. You speak from a little experience there, don't oh, yeah. you? You got to get to know the hitters and make sure you watch how they swing if that hand comes off the bat. And a good start to the inning with the strikeout. What was the worst game you had in terms of just body blows? Oh, I think every time you're behind the plate, you're, every time you're blocking balls at the end of the day, you uh, know, ice bath sometimes sounds really good in the summer. Jaden Rogers is the hitter, and he takes ball one. Rogers has had a nice day. An RBI double in the second, a solo home run in the fourth. Well, Rogers on a 3-1 pitch swung, and then he fouled it back. But then a 3-0, then 3-1, he got the same pitch. He didn't miss this one. Rifled it out of here. At the top of the broadcast, we told you how good the top of this Texas West order was. Breaking ball inside. If they get some guys on and some production from other parts, boy, this becomes a very dangerous team and one that can get to Williamsport. Ball four, Rodgers 
on base for the third time. They have a, a runner here. That's now four walks for Egan Prather on the mound. Yeah, he, he is struggling with his command a little bit. He, he's going to be on to finish this thing. He's in 31 pitches. It, he reaches. Jake Nava will be the special pinch runner. And Ian Shadden at the plate. Good hack right there on that first fastball. Both these teams we've talked about it the entire ball game. They've done a, a lot of swinging early in counts. In the air, down the left field line, and foul out of play. Two strike count to Ian Shadden. See the KAS decal on the helmet there, and that is for his older brother, Cade Allen Shadden, who passed away just a few months ago. And the team, the community, has really rallied around young Ian and his family. Yes. Strike three. Third strikeout for Prather. Find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action and join the conversation with LLWS. Yomar Prado chases 0-1. Getting a little better feel for that breaking ball, especially first pitch because these teams have been so aggressive early. 0 oh 2. Prado has played a fine shortstop in this regional. His favorite player is Javier Baez. Swing and a miss. Four strikeouts for Prather. He's also walked four, but that's a scoreless fifth. Louisiana with a 6-5 lead. Two spots, Oakland right on their heels. Then Boston, six and a half back entering the night. Pats and Lions reporting to camp ahead of their Thursday night matchup. Uh, Tom Brady got an extension. I don't know if you, you heard. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, he's, you know, just let's go ahead and he's 42, got a three-year deal. As a former professional athlete, can, can you just put that in perspective? 42 it. year old getting <laughs> that kind of an extension? Well, <laughs> he is a reigning Super Bowl champion. He's got a little bit of leverage. Yeah, he's won, he's won a few. Oh, you played against Nolan Ryan, who pitched into his mid 40s and was effective yes. in his 40s. Gavin Berry, right center. A nice sliding catch for out number one, Cole Netherland out there in right. The catch by the right fielder, Cole Netherland, brings the point number 10. Nice job of Egan attacking Prather. first step. Outfield is always that first step. Got a good read on it, able to secure the baseball. Egan Prather now, the hitter. Lil Perm. Nice play at third. And Rogers with a strong throw. Some fine leather by this Midland Texas team here in the fifth. Drew Colley, meanwhile, at 79 pitches, getting up to the maximum pitch limit threshold, which is 85. Now, if you begin an at-bat under 85, you can then complete the at-bat and go over. 
Peyton Spadoni will bat here in the seventh spot for Dallat. So Louisiana has now satisfied mandatory play. All of its players have an at bat. And Spadoni down the third base line. Big turn at first, going for two. The throw is not in time. The throw beat the runner. But the slide coming around the bag and a little slow on the tag gives Spadoni a double. Well, it was a really nice play all the way around right here. But when you have to get a little short hop pick, it's hard to get your the tag back in time. It took it behind him, able to slide around to get the back side of the bag. How about getting a pinch hit? Come on, get a pinch hit when you need it. I'm trying to get some insurance. A rider Planchard now. 0 for 1 tonight. Popped up. Foul territory right side. Strike one. He is starting to peek ahead. Top of this Texas lineup has been super in this Southwest Regional. It'll be 9-1-2 if they can just be trailing by one. Well, they've got a one-run lead. Louisiana does. And you're right, for Texas West, that third hitter due up in the sixth, their best hitter, Aiden Serrano. This one gets away from La Madrid, and Spadoni to third. Well, that's big. Now, all of a sudden, another wild pitch. And you've got a, a piece of insurance right there, one and two. 84th pitch of the night coming for the left-hander. In the air to right field. Netherland makes the catch, and that'll do it. 9, 1, and 2 do up for Texas West. Aiden Serrano, their bat's best hitter, will bat third in the sixth. The Little League World Series is brought to you by Mazda, Feel Alive, and Gatorade Thirst Cruncher, the proven sport. The winner of this game between Texas West and Louisiana will play in the regional championship on Wednesday. The loser faces Oklahoma tomorrow, and then the winner of tomorrow's game would be that second team in Wednesday's final. Down to three teams, all vying for a spot in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and the Little League World Series. And we go to the sixth inning. Louisiana, three outs from the championship game. Texas West, down one run, and we get a new pitcher. It's Will Andrade, who comes in for Egan Prather. Prather threw 38 pitches, but went over the 35 pitch threshold with the last batter, so he would still be eligible to come back and pitch Wednesday. Nine, one, and two do up for New Mexico or for Texas West. Bailey off the pitcher. Andrade from his backside with the put out. Hang a star on that one. And now the umpire coming to the mound is time is called. He's making sure to see if he's okay. How about Will Andrade? Just an outstanding reaction ball right back at him. Able to get a glove down on it and knock it down and then from his backside, get an out. Oh my. Louisiana now two outs from the championship game. Top of the order, Crew Colley for Texas West. Skips away. Holly is 0 for 2. Scored in the third. Ahead 2 and 0. On deck is Aiden Serrano, the best hitter in this Texas West lineup. And if Kali gets on, Serrano would represent the go-ahead run. Got to take a couple right here. You, you put yourself in position. He's got good speed, and like you said, you you got your best hitter coming behind you. 
We said it at the very top of the broadcast. The top three in this order have driven the bus for Texas West. I, I think you got to take another one. It, it, it just set the table. Chop to second. Two outs. And it's up to Serrano, who can tie the game with one swing of the bat. Serrano today, one for two, a single and a walk. And two fine plays in center field, a no catch doubt. and an and outfield assist. Gotta be looking for something up you can drive right here as a hitter. Two outs and nobody on. He hasn't been able to throw his off speed pitch for a strike to this point. Two and one. Stay right there with your fastball, though. own cause in the sixth inning and Louisiana is one win away from the Little League World Series. I'll tell you what, it, it, you become a fielder when you release the ball as a pitcher, but can't do it any better than this young man did in this inning. Snared both of them that came back at him. And Louisiana in the championship game, one win away from punching their ticket to Williamsport. And they'll have an off day tomorrow while Texas West and Oklahoma will play in the final elimination game leading up to the championship. So Texas West can still get to Wednesday. They've got a win tomorrow against Oklahoma. Those two will play at 6 p.m. on ESPN. And Louisiana will await the winner. Well played game. You gotta love the resolve of Texas West. Down early, 4-0, 5-1. They came back to tie the game. Louisiana able to scratch a run across in the bottom of the fourth and then zeros for both teams from there. Louisiana wins 6-5 and River Ridge, Louisiana. 18 outs from taking its tailgate to Pennsylvania. Yeah, they, they've got to feel real good about where they're at at this point. What a ball game. 6-5 or final score. Louisiana will play for a spot in Williamsport on Wednesday, NFL Live comes your way next here on ESPN2. That's after this.